Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our very special webinar today um, with uh, Goldie Hahn and the Mind Up organization. Um, I have a special conversation for you in just a few minutes. I wanted to just give you a couple of um, updates for logistics. Um, the, the chat box is disabled. Um, there will be a short Q&A at the end of the conversation. So if you have questions, you can type them into the, the Q&A box. We'll be running that live. Um, the other piece is um, there is the closed captioning on this webinar, and so you'll see that on the bottom of the screen. Um, there's an option for you on your screen if you need closed captioning to go ahead and turn that on as well. Um, we're just that we have a quite a few folks that are signing in right now, so we're just going to give them a few more minutes to start in, and we'll get ready to begin. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a one-way webinar. We can't see you and we can't hear you, so we just wanted to make sure um, we are assuring you that. Um, that you are not seen or heard on your, from your screens to us. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce to you um, Dito, who is uh, one of the directors at MindUp. So Dito, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you so much, Chi. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're really, really happy and grateful that you guys chose to be here with us tonight. And this is one of our live events that we're going to be hosting for the next several months. and. We're doing this because there are so many interesting conversations that a lot of us are having at home and us at MindUp are having as well. And they all have to do with self-care, how to, how to care for our brains, our minds, our soul. And we figured that if we gathered experts around the fields of neuroscience and positive psychology and mindfulness, et cetera, and we had them here with us having conversations with Goldie and sharing that with you, inviting you in, it would bring some value in these times where so many of you guys need um, uh, a partner to have a conversation with. So that's why we're having these. And this is the one that's titled uh, Building Bridges and Healthy Mind. And our guest today is somebody very special. It is Dr. J, who is actually really, 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 really happy to be here. And she has a book that's out. You guys can check it out on Amazon. But hear some more about Dr. J. Dr. Jacqueline Sandelin is an inspirational speaker and accomplished school principal, lecturer, and speaker whose why not attitude has led to dramatic improvements in some of Southern California's most under-resourced schools. Her passion for guiding young people has garnered national recognition and helped her to form partnerships with both local and international organizations. Dr. J as we're going to call her, has an innovative and visionary style. And she's taken this simple question, why not, and turned it into a movement that inspires educators around the country. So we're excited to have her today have a conversation with Goldie, who's our founder. And right away, we're going to get into it. And I'm going to disappear and have our founder and leader, Goldie, come to the screen and kick us off with this awesome conversation with Dr. J.
We're ready to go. Hello. Yes, you're good to go, Goldie. Let's go. Hello. <laughs> We're here. We made it. <laughs> oh my goodness! I really, I was just pressing all these things. And I know. Like, I'm on this. So listen, we're going to have a, a wonderful conversation, sweetheart. I, it's yeah. so great to see you. Um, oh, it's more great than you. That's awesome. So just a little bit of uh, a back history. Um, um, I started the program, uh, uh, you know, after 9-11 because I was very, very concerned about the mindset of our children, what yeah. was going to happen to them, their mental health, and, and all the uncertainty that, that we had around this time period. And what's happened now, which is just extraordinary, is that again, in this lifetime, and how many years later, almost 20, soon to be 20. Um, yeah. We're facing some of the most horrific things in our society, in our world, emotional upset, um, health upset. There's, there's, there, we don't seem to look at where the answers are right now. And it's creating so much anxiety and so much fear. And, and here we are again, so, you know, trying to get, you know, our program, our things into our schools so we can give children tools to understand their brain, to, to know how to, to relax their mind, to, to do breathing and focus, because all of this changes the brain for the better. And I think today we're going to talk about how you and I both have this mind, it's a mindset, is that we're going to try to turn what is really negative thinking into a more positive mindset and a more positive way of thinking and, and acting, behaving, and actually experiencing even the smallest little things to make them happier. And, 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 and Jackie, Dr. J, and I'm Matt, <laughs> and, and I love it, uh, in 2009. Yeah. And, and that was when you were principal at this Compton School, and you just were to me, like the other side of my of the egg. I mean, we believed the same things. We both had this sense of joy. We knew we wanted to spread this for the children. To we give both them love to laugh. We both love to laugh. <laughs> and there's research on that too, though. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so I mean, now where we are is that after all this years and we've come together again, which I'm just so happy. I wanna ask you, honey, what have you been doing? I know I've been, doing a lot with mind up over these years but it's been a long time so share with us a little bit about what you've been doing and, and how you've been uh, affecting positively change well first of all i want to say thank you thank you so much goldie just for um how having me on and being a voice um and hopefully adding value to the conversation um you know as you were just talking i was thinking about how all of the problems that we've been facing the challenges now is really presenting an opportunity an opportunity a new opportunity for educators to think differently to really talk about wellness because in 2009 when you and i met and we were laughing and talking and really discussing the importance of wellness and my school we were really embracing that new understanding you were so far ahead of the times that we weren't even in a position in a mindset like you're saying to really even think about that because we were thinking about test scores. We were thinking about just trying to get ahead. We were thinking about things that we probably should not have been thinking about. Instead, and now we're talking about it, which is wellness and resilience and really even dealing with the issues of trauma and social, you know, emotional skills and awareness and all of those things that impact us daily. And so social injustice. I mean, this is where we are. Oh my gosh. Never. Even yeah. that, all of those things, right? Yeah. All of those things just really have, have, have happened since then. But now we are really tuned in to lean into that conversation. But I am so glad that it, it was in 2009 when you, you know, because during that time, I remember while we were still even focused on a lot of other things besides wellness, we embraced that program. And I can remember um, you know, I asked teachers, I asked them, who, who can volunteer? Who wants to volunteer to do this? And I had several teachers that said, we would like to be champions of that. And they, and I can remember how their class climate changed. And educator, you know, you're all focused on, you know, student achievement, but we're not thinking of the whole body, the whole self the spirit, the mind, the soul, all of that. 
And it really began to change my leadership. I don't know if you know that, but it did. It made me start to think, I need to do something different. And I need to start looking at my school as a place of an oasis. Tell me about your school. Very tough, very challenging, great kids, great families, but it certainly had its challenges because we had a high percentage of your youth. Um, we had a small percentage of actual students who were homeless, families that were homeless. I can remember um, some parents who were actually incarcerated uh, for life. And those who were coming out of incarceration and reuniting with families. So it was difficult. We lived, we were located right across the street from a housing facility that also um, was part of rehabilitating families who were reuniting. So we had our challenges, you know, um, as a school. So that was even more of a reason that I needed to think differently and why I even mind up at that time was super helpful for not only my teachers, um, but for also for me, because we started doing something called brain breaks. I know you know what that is. <laughs> we weren't doing that. And we were like, oh my gosh, that was a, we, I think that saved us. I'm serious. I really am serious. And also we changed our, our PE and our, our routine our daily schedule absolutely changed and that wasn't easy either by the way because you know when you're set up in a system you know you just follow that system but when we learned th about the brain and how it works you, you know I remember you came actually you came and talked to my teachers I mean I, we were like Goldie Holland is here yeah well, <laughs> it, was, it was for me a joy too because it's the teachers that we have to look at and say look Here's, we want to care for them and their self-care is important. And exactly. how they experience the program in this case actually would help them as well because it's a two-way street. You learn it, it, you have it, you experience it and so forth. But what I love about what you did, which I didn't do at that time, is that you got dancing. So explain to me because this is where- Oh you know, my God. A happy child is a child who can learn. And so when you created such joy I mean, I really, and then we'll go on to see what you're doing at this point in time in history and figure out because it's been a while. But well, I, I got to tell you something about the dancing, though. The dancing was serious. We didn't even wait to start the dancing. You know, I started bringing in partnerships that helped me bring in these enrichment programs throughout the school day. So we brought dancing, music, theater. It's great. We brought photography for the kids who couldn't focus. I mean, you know, all of those things started to change. I believe it also changed me as a leader. It really did. Um, because when I started taking the brain break, I started thinking about things that we could actually do that was more meaningful. And you know, I see kids today who, 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 I, who I taught and who, who were at the school many years ago who, who still remember how that impacted them. So it was meaningful to do. And I'm glad we were a champion for that change. And you know, here's what else you did, which was interesting, because what I'm interested in now is that we have so much racial divide that brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is, is that it, it should not be that way. And in our, in our classrooms, we have to know how to bring that family together. That's a family. That's the way we have to work. And by our research showed that our children were able to work better together and create a community in the classroom. Now, what you were doing is you were creating through dance, through music, through photography, through things. This, the children actually were alive and learning inside of their classroom. That means that when they danced together, when they did, you know, when they played together, when they did all these sort of things that they were doing, is that we were creating a climate in the classroom of togetherness and there was no division. That's right. We were changing the culture of the school. Exactly. And this is the kind of thing that I'm looking at now, which is to say, how do we change the community? How do we, how do we, don't, we don't say don't, you know, bully, don't do this, don't do that. No, we want to create love in that classroom. And I don't mean to sound like a 60s girl, even though I am. <laughs> Make love, not war. Um, but I mean, I, I think we need more, more right. care, more empathy, more sharing, uh, and less uh, this against that. 
um, everything is polarized. How do we take that polarization away and create a community in the classroom? And that's what you did. And, and, and you know, at that point in time, oh God, I mean, everybody's dancing together. Everybody's laughing together. You know, children's minds are so beautiful, you know, and we want to stimulate that part because when a child feels positive and optimistic and has a safe haven in the classroom and the teacher is there, they can learn because a child can, can learn when a frenzied mind, brain, a child cannot learn. A fearful brain, a child cannot learn. A, ch a child who is afraid of being retribution because of color or race or whatever, they can't learn mm -mm. because they're, they're, they feel it. And, and their, their midbrain is going blah, 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 as it does the amygdala, which of course we know is mm -hmm. what the fight, flight, or freeze. That prefrontal cortex just can't think because that little thing that's jumping around in that midbrain just, just doesn't focus. So I love what you did. Long-winded saying things. No, yeah. It, it, well, no, I, I, the more you're talking is just kind of really taking me back to thinking about how many boys I had in the dance class. I had more boys than girls, and I was, I, that was very surprising to me. And we also had a, a lot of shy children who decided to um, actually sign up for these classes. So this was doing a lot more than I expected. It, it started, and I'm glad you used the word community, because sometimes we forget Um, when we talk about community, and I talk about that a lot, is that community is always on the outside or, you know, it's the, it's the people around us, but there's an internal community. And that internal community are those who live and work and breathe on the inside who absolutely are a family. And I can remember, you know, walking around the campus, hearing music, you know, seeing children dancing, playing music. I knew that that was fundamentally changing our community. Yeah. And that alone, was also impacting our student achievement academically. So there is a connection and we know that there's research that, you know, children who, you know, music absolutely impacts math and language arts, it impacts language. Exactly. Well, by the way, music, every part of the brain is working. Right. If, music, if you play an instrument and you're in music, every part of your brain is working. It's extraordinary how important it is, which, you know, is why <clears throat> I was so sad when so many of the schools took music out of the school. You know, yes. you know yeah. those things, the arts, this expression, the, it's like, and by the way, for focused attention, which is what we want our children to focus more, learn to stay with something for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit also what mindful seeing is through a camera. That's one of our, our exercises. But when we focus through a camera, they're looking right at something. <laughs> in a very yeah. Way. And, you know, we want to build that muscle. We want to build that. So they are better in math. I mean, our, mm -hmm. our research proved it, math and reading went up. So it's, these are the things that if you just take a few minutes in your classroom to do something mm -hmm. fun, like so-and-so, oh, I'll tell you a story. So now I'm in a classroom. <laughs> I was in Vancouver, BC. And I go in there and I'm listening to some of the kids. How do you use mind up? How do you use mind up? And this one little guy, it was like fifth grade, he was sort of listening to me <laughs> and he was just dancing. Just <laughs> he was just moving and dancing, whatever. And I went over to him and I said, I bet you're an amazing dancer. And he kind of looked up at me and he went, well, I don't like that. And I said, would you, would you dance for us? And I asked the teacher, I said, do you have any music? And she said, oh, sure, she turns on. And oh, yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. He That's it. Them. That's all you needed to do. I know. And literally, I swear, I swear this took five minutes out of the class. Five minutes. And he got up and he started dancing. And then one girl got up and another got up. And then I said, oh, come on, everybody. Let's get up. I swear, it must have been a minute and a half. It's contagious. And dancing and laughing. Right. And all sat down in our chair after that. And I said, okay, now we're going to do a brain <laughs> break. Who wants to hit the bell? And then the bell went, they hit the bell, and all the kids oh, I remember the bell. totally brought themselves back together again, mm. ready to move on. I mean, it was like so beautiful. And he felt proud. Yeah. He felt, he felt good. So we, there's just a way to- And it changed the energy in the room. Totally. It totally. And, and the brain needs to have- Change the whole energy in the whole entire place. And I think also it freed other kids to do that. 
Yes. It did. Yes. It, did. it yes. opens us up. You know, there's a there's another issue when you do brain work with the kids in the classroom. They can only focus for a certain period of time. You've got to know that. And then we're asking to squeeze, you know, blood from a turnip. You know, it's like they're, they're, they're no, just, oh, no. It, wait a minute, Goldie. I just remembered something. I what? did that in the morning exercises every morning. I, you know, I even meet the, with the kids. Yeah. You know, you have to hold them down for a while. <laughs> yeah. Until classes start. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to hold down 800, 900 kids at a time and keep talking about the rules. There's only so many things you could talk about. You know what I started doing? I brought out the music. Back then it was a recorder. Okay, you guys know the recorder. I pushed the recorder, we pushed the music. Oh my gosh, the dancing was going on. And you know, I love to dance, you know that. So it was so awesome. And let me just tell you, the kids enjoyed it. But guess who came out? The parents. I, listen, the community members, one guy came out. I said, listen, sir, you're not supposed to be on campus. But he enjoyed coming <laughs> to someone <laughs> down the street. <laughs> he, he just came because he heard something wonderful happening. You know what it was? It was that contagion of yeah. happiness and joy, you know, floating through the community. And hey, the gates were open. He said, I'm coming in. And we did that every single morning. You know, after we started doing it every morning, I'm telling you, it got a little tiring. I was like losing weight. It was great. I got to get to dancing again. That's all I have to say. I love that. Was it. Awesome. It, it's great. You know, <laughs> and it is really good. Now, happiness is an interesting thing because in the program, we have savoring happiness because I believe it's one of the very important things. And the brain is so plastic. The plasticity of the brain can actually shift how yeah. children and people think. So when you start young, of them being able to savor happiness, I tell you, the end, you know, I wouldn't go out until I researched this program, and that was all those years ago. And I researched okay. it, and what many, 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 many things came out. It was amazing. Um, it was great. It was so great that I felt I could go out there and not be Goldie Hawn. I could just get it out there to schools because they're going to go, what's Goldie Hawn know about anything with education? Oh, but you came and talked to my teachers. You knew a lot. And we were like, oh, right. whoa. Yeah. But I wanted this program to move, move, you know, and I didn't want it to be like yeah. a celebrity program per se. I just didn't want to. I mean, but anyway. But well, that it, whole, yeah. it had an authentic, it had an authentic feel because it was research we had not really learned right it was. and um, it, was. it opened up our brain to think about you know how are we teaching with the brain in mind yes. versus just trying to cover the curriculum perfect with the brain in mind exactly and when these kids tell you how their brain works when they're in their second and third grade you know yeah. it blows your mind but i was going to tell you about this happiness thing so you know i started well and uh, uh, this thing on happiness because I, well before my day I went into doing a happiness documentary because I believed it was a very important emotion that we had to pay attention to. We yeah. couldn't lose that as human beings. And I was noticing certain things in my traveling through the world. Anyway, the reason why it's, it actually fell apart was because of 9-11, okay? And then I took a lot of different aspects of that happiness, all the stuff that I was doing, and put it together in mind up. Because so much of happiness has to do with brain, mindset, and learning that we can change our mindset, our, our set point of happiness, 50% if we have the intention to do that. And these are the things that we're talking about. Once again, going back to the theme of how do we bring together? We, you know, we're not going to be answering racial divide and, and the things that we're dealing with this way head on. We can do it. But I believe that, that what we're talking about right now is changing the culture in the classroom, bringing more empathy without talking about it. How do we, and we have that, how do you teach that? How do you share doing acts of kindness? You mm -hmm. know, I mean, one of the areas that I remember that I went to Texas and they have an amazing school there, which did my book. And they did the gratitude circle, which we do because gratitude is a huge uh, indicator oh, yes. for dopamine emission and really much, much more happiness and connectivity. It's a wonderful practice. So we passed around a, happy, a, a, a gratitude stone. Well, there was a little boy in the class who felt that nobody liked him. You know, some kids come to school with these feelings that they're not worth anything and they, they don't have friends. And, right. you know, this is another thing that mitigates learning as well as can, you know, puts them in a bad position for future, uh, you know, m mental issues uh, and problems. 
Um, anyway, so we got, did the thing, and one little girl grabbed the stone, and she said that she was grateful for Johnny. That was him. Oh. And I swear, I got tears in my eyes, because of he course. looked at her like, oh, like me? Oh, thank you. I mean, it was a moment that was just so beautiful. When one little person, one moment, one exercise changed the way he felt about himself. You know, and it, it, it and it went on. You know, he it, it, it made it was a it was a step up in yeah. helping him feel better about himself. So we have to realize that our children, honey, they are they come in with all these issues just like we do. I mean, just because they're kids doesn't mean they don't have these thoughts. They just don't know how to put them together, right? No, that's right. Little people. They're little people. So you know. That's when, you know, you bring in the happiness thing. Because I think we are, you know, too, the both of us have this joy thing. Um, and I think laughter is really important in the, in the classroom. Well, um, it's also like the gratitude circle and other um, really impactful exercises kind of gives them a license to be free. And, yeah. yeah. And measured. And to <laughs> self-express. You know, schools have been very yeah. regimented for so long. Yeah. Sure, measured. Right, because self-control is something that they willfully do. Because hmm. we have created the program for self-control. And these children, the more they know about their amygdala, the more they know that the guard dog is, is guarding something that's not helping them make a right decision. Hmm. And then ultimately, um, they are gaining power. Yeah. Super powers. Wow. Super, super brain powers. Because... You know, one little boy said, oh, I, my, my friend pushed me on the playground. He said, but I, 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 I took a deep breath and I did my mind up, which is interesting. And he said, and hmm. I realized if I hit him back, he said, he wouldn't be my best friend anymore. Now, that's critical thinking. He was in fifth That's higher order thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's amazing. Now, you did something that was just so cool. And I, I, it was like, I went, oh, yeah, sure. Now, I had a thing with my girlfriend. And we said, okay, this is the year of, of why not. Ooh. I said, this is the year. And we both said, this is the year of why not. We're just going to say. Always are thinking okay. the same thing. We are I, always. I know. So I don't know how that works. Tell us about your philosophy of mind up, which is what your wonderful book is about sharing with also communities and so forth. Well, you know, it's interesting because it happened um, while being a principal, um, which was not, you know, I always have to say, you know, education was not something I really even tried to do. My whole vision was I thought I was going to be a newscaster, okay? And I don't know how that happened. So, you know, working and as an intern and in several news stations and, and then my parents were like, get a job in education while you're trying to wait for that big break to happen. But, you know, I don't believe- Always have a backup plan. Right, right, right. Your parents, you're out. That's right. Have a backup plan. Go do something so you- But who knew that, you know, there's no mistakes. It really isn't. It was purposeful because it's where I found my purpose. Purpose by working in very challenging schools, but also seeing that what they wanted was also something that they needed which was a better school, more resources, more opportunities. And I remember being outside, like I said, dancing with the kids and and, and eating the mission, the vision, and somewhere I just started saying, why not? And the kids were like, why not? Why not? I said, do you want a playground? Why not? A basketball court, why not? Knew this, knew that, why not? Why not? And I'm telling you, it became, I think, another avenue of happiness and also optimism right. because it gave us something to look forward to. Now, let me tell you, I don't know how I was going to get all those things. So I kind of felt bad because I was like getting them excited about something I really did not have, I thought at that time, power to get or the funding or the resources to get, you know, not off of our budget, mm -hmm. but it, it felt good just saying why not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's been danced and everybody started dancing mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened you know one person said why not we all started saying it the kids started seeing me in the home. parents started saying it one parent even made a t-shirt for me 
and, and put it on there. And I was like, okay, something's happening. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was a collective hope that was really filtering through our community our internal community. And it started bleeding to the outside where I would go to stores and local places in the community where I worked. And I would hear that um, from students who would see me, you know, in the, in the market. Sometimes I stop at the market going home. Hey, Dr. J, why not? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is something that started catching on. And that led me to reaching out to partnerships to help me to reach those goals and to make those dreams happen because I felt obligated to make those things happen. Of course, yeah, yeah. It is a why not makes me feel good and it made, made us feel good. Um, there are phrases that actually tip the brain and mm -hmm. actually creates a, a possibility, a potentiality. Um, it's the one thing we, our kids know is that there is great potential up here. There right. is amazing things that what we put in there sometimes comes out, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And they, they are learning how to utilize the very thing that they're asked to use because now they know they know more about their brain. So yeah. why not? It's like, hey, sure, uh, that's a really positive thing to say. Maybe we won't get everything we want, but it puts you in a different mindset. That's for sure. So I think that's just really it, awesome. Well, it, absolutely. Yeah. So you've written it a book. Has, you, you wrote I this wrote book, book, right? Yeah. So tell me about what, is that what inspired you to write the book? It did. You know, I'm, first of all, I can't even believe the book has actually come together. I'm real excited about that. It's, well, it's everybody cool. is, by the way, when you read, done a book, because I've done a few, you look at it and you go, is this really a book? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. So oh, good. I'm not the only one who feels that way. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, and it's quite a feat. But you, you do look at that and say, okay. This is my heart and soul. This is the yeah. stuff that I, I wrote about because I had the experience of doing it. So it came very authentically, I'm sure, to you. It um, did. It yeah. did. Yeah. It absolutely did. I, I, I think one of the things that um, has certainly kind of was a driver for the book for me was knowing that this, these were lessons I learned. And I just couldn't contain it, like keep it to myself. I wanted to share this, these same lessons with other administrators to say, listen, I don't care where your school is located. I don't care what obstacles you have. I don't care what the challenges are. The possibilities of asking that question is still available to you mm -hmm. because it was available to us. I mean, I, I couldn't think of other schools that had it tougher than our school. You know, everybody thinks their own school is tough, but we were, it was pretty tough and it wasn't easy. There were times I was really wondering whether I was going to complete a school year I because um, I, I, I don't know if I had it within me, but that why not carried me through. Um, and the scholars, I call them scholars, not students, because they just really empowered me um, to know that things were possible. And another thing too is that why not Goldie, really doors of possibility with partnerships right. for me. Um, because I found out there were other individuals like yourself who had the same connection that I did and believed what I believed right. and said, let's work together to make some of those dreams come true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Partnerships are really important. Um, I think it's also when you see uh, partnerships now happening more than ever, which is really great. Um, we're not holding on necessarily to what we think is our IP. Uh, we created this, we did that. We need each other now more than ever. I mean, there is no time mm. like the present where we actually look at and go, okay, what, what, what do you need from me? And what can I, you know, and, and, and what can you give me? And how can we work together? And it is just a beautiful thing. And it's the same thing we want our children to do. And by the way, I just have to say, I just, I love that you call your students your scholars. It, it's so great, sweetie. I, it's just great. I mean, I, these are the things that make me happy. Um, it's so important to give a, a sense of worth and value to every child, no matter what, because we are the keepers of their little hearts and minds in that classroom. Now, I'm not, but my hope is, is that uh, our teachers do 
um, have a, a tools to be able yeah. to deal with some of their issues uh, that they're dealing with, even in their own life, you know? I mean, our brain breaks and the things we do three times a day in the classroom, you know, the kids are now asking if they could have it before a test. We didn't write it in a in the program and they want it before yeah. a test. And they do, and we made it, and you know what, going back to what you just said about Scholar, I, real quickly, there's this yeah. little boy named William who was always getting kicked out of the class, always, like always, always, and he never understood why. And when he would come to my office, I remember he told me, I was about to tell him off, and he said, remember, I'm a scholar. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh. I said, oh, where did I start here? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I felt like I was speaking, you know, instead of speaking down, is I was speaking up. And it raised his, it raised in his mind his potential right. to be better, that he could be better, that he had. That's the reason why I will never, ever call a child, and this, this is going back to a lot of conversations you and I have had, I will never call a child at risk. Right, at risk. Too. I, I never I never do that anymore. I always say they're all at potential. Exactly. Beautiful. They they may not know it yet, but they're at potential. And we gotta find that potential. And yes. we have to figure out how to, like you said, exercise that muscle. Right. And recognize that potential. And it's about recognition, you know, yeah. because they, they don't feel recognized. Yeah. You know, it's interesting this conversation going forever. But I'm <laughs> I know, and I, I'm, I'm so inspired by it. But one of the areas that we're working on now, and we'll probably work on it together uh, as well with your guidance and help, um, is we want to do our own, basically, in, you know, we're going to be doing, you know, online learning and, and distance learning, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I don't like that distance learning is too far away. It we is too to, far away. Thank it, you for saying that. Woo. Yeah, it, it, it is. Yes. It's, oh, it's, I'm so glad. I thought I was the only one, Goldie. I know. Well, it's like closer connection learning or something. Right. Because you got to come up with a new name. You got to come up with a name tonight. I was, I was going to say, come, <laughs> let's, let our brainstorm because there is a new name here. There um, is. I mean, I'm looking at you right now, right? And I see your face. And the one thing I don't have is any distraction. I really like that. I like the idea that I'm, ha I'm doing mindful seeing, right? Yeah, like, mindful so, seeing. So, this is a mindful. So that is an interesting thing. So we're going to, how do we wrap? mind up and some of these actually functionality which is just wonderful inside of the the learning so actually these kids don't get off and just run away right they, it has to be some level of fun to get them right. back into it mm -hmm. um, and anyway we're working on that uh so we've got you know our, our work cut up for us and, and we've got our online coming you know as you know um but i'd love to enlist your help there it would be really great to start. Well, I would love to be part of that because our parents, you know, schools have changed. We're at home now. And, yeah. and they're looking for strategies and opportunities and tools um, to help them because they can't just sit in front of a computer all day. And when, they're, and when they are, they have to be given some activities to do that are going to be metacognitive, that are going to allow them to reflect and have fun. I mean, what happened to having fun? Do you remember in kindergarten? Did you ever have fun in kindergarten? Kindergarten used to be fun and then it turned into something too tough. I don't know, too much. I don't know. I mean, these kids, you know, you know in, in Sweden, uh, they or uh, in Scandinavia, uh, they don't kid, go to kindergarten. They don't learn all this stuff till they're like six or seven. They, oh, really? They, yeah, I mean, they're just meant to play. They go out and, and they naturally, you know, their brain is developing. But it's interesting about the little Einstein world. What's better? Um, and and also free, free time to learn, free time to have the brain develop into solution-oriented things. How do I get over the mud? How do I? Yeah, oh, music. Remember music? And what about a nap? Oh my gosh! I know. I love my nap. I, still, <laughs> I wish I could still nap. <laughs> oh, honey, this has been so much fun. I I love it. I I'm so happy. I hope you've all enjoyed this. Um, it's uh. It's just great. And, and well, I, I also wanted to say really quickly, you know, we, we have, I, when I'm doing workshops um, right now around all of this. And, and one of the things I do is also called the why not habits. And mm -hmm. I kind of advise them um, because of our work together. And, you know, so Monday, I, I, one of the habits is mindful Monday. Oh, you I know, love it. Having a, a mindful Monday thinking and opening up that mind. But but just being being thought being thoughtful of, of what's going on up here 
And then um, there is Transformational Tuesday. Winning Wednesday, we have to definitely stop, take stock of our wins. I, I love Winning Wednesday. That, that's, I love Winning Wednesday. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, that one's the best, I think. And then, but thankful, going back to gratitude, what you mm -hmm. said, thankful Thursday, you know, that's a law. It's a law, you know, that, you know, when you give, you get back yeah. so much more. And I think we should go back to teaching our children that, teaching our teachers that, teaching ourselves that. I agree. And then, of course, Fun Friday, because we got to have some fun. We got to dance, you know, even yeah. if you have to just find some place in your house to dance or yeah. move, right? I mean, these are things that we can still do. And those daily habits, I think, are going to help other individuals to start really taking on some of these activities where they can become champions of change. I love it. I love this. And I hope we put it up and so people can see this because okay. we be hit great. all kinds of marks here on, you know, how do I, people say, well, you know, how do you, you know, well, you know, you're so happy, or how do you keep a happy life, or how do you, well, it, because you want to, and this is the way you can look at Monday and Tuesday, mm -hmm. and follow a way of actually elevating that part, not just of your mind, but of your heart, because the heart and the mind have this incredible oh, yeah. connection. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you said it a minute ago, though, Goldie, you said the word intention. Right. When you have an intention, you know, it takes an intentional mind to have a healthy mind, to want to build bridges, to want to even engage in racial healing or right. equity. It takes the right intention. And you said that, and that's something that we can't forget. Right. You know, what are our intentions? And it makes me think about why, you know, that is, that's where we have to get back to if we really want to build bridges, why am I doing this? You know, what am I thinking and why am I thinking this? That will help us develop, I think, empathy in what you're saying, you know, like you said, if we can, if we can bring that back in schools, I mean, what, what a change we can make there. Exactly, it's thinking about thinking. And, and we as humans can do that. We have metacognition. We're <laughs> able to actually witness ourselves, which is amazing. So when we bring self-awareness, which is one of our things to the children and to the, the adults and, 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 and parents and, 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 and teachers um, and educators, but that's what we need to do. Self-awareness, the ability to watch yourself. And it was like this little boy on the playground. He said, you know, I, yeah. I did my breath, I'm breathing, and I realized, he said, a realization is real great mm -hmm. that if I, if I pushed him back, he wouldn't be my best friend anymore. So, um, and that's critical thinking. That's metacognition. I am watching this. I see myself. What if I had a reactivity to this boy? What if I did that? That wouldn't serve me. So these are the kind of things that actually, there's no color connected to it. It's just a way of being. Mm. And that's what we want more than anything. That's humanity. That's humanity. It's that's a potential... Humanity. It is the potential to really bring the human, the, the humanity back. Yes. We, we, I don't want to talk down to where we are today and so on and so forth. We may have lost our way a little bit in some ways, but we are so capable of regenerating mm. a lot of these areas. And that means also the heart, because I believe that the more good thoughts that we have during the day and more that generate inside of your heart, you will be healthier, you will be happier, and you will have better relationships, mm -hmm. and you will sleep better, and you won't have the kind of stress that people have. And right. God knows, we cannot, we have to learn how to reduce our stress. Hmm. Oh, Dr. J. <laughs> you just made me like, I felt like I was, I could lay on a couch right now. <laughs> <laughs> <With that. laughs> well, okay. no, because you're making me think about being resilient and you, you just gave us hope. You gave us, you gave us all hope. I'm serious because it's really dark and, you know, and the, you know, but you said something really poignant. We have the ability, we have the power to yeah. be resilient. Yes, we do. We really damn well do. And, I, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to, and I, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. well, wait, how do you, listen, Goldie, when you said yeah. something about, you know, have, thinking positive thoughts, how do you do that every day? How do you do it? You take, you actually, first of all- How are you doing that? You, I, first of all, you wake up in the morning and you do your first positive thought. 
And that is, this is going to be a good day. This is going to be a good day. And then you get up and then sometimes a, a negative thought will run into your mind. I'll tell you a story. This is honest. I'm nothing to hide. I'm in, Bang I'm in, I'm in uh, Colorado. It's very beautiful here. Um, at where we are, I, we have a ranch here, and the kids are here, and and life is 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 as good as it could be. Okay, um, but you know, I took a walk today, and I was very introspective, and I started to cry for all of what's going on. It just every now and then it just hits you. Yeah. We are emotional beings. We are. There's no way around it. You're not always happy. You're not always sad. Emotions come and go. But today I really felt it. And I felt like, I don't know why I feel like crying. I just do. I have no reason to cry other than the fact that this world sometimes weighs down on you. When you see people hurting each other and you see there are things that are going on that are, that are unspeakable. Um, we see things on the news that actually create trauma in all of us. We don't know how to help. Sometimes we feel absolutely helpless we don't know we don't know what's good and i was just walking and i just decided that i was going to stop this now that i'd had my moment that moment was real that's not going away but if i don't get myself back into a positive state of mind then i won't be any help to anyone including myself mm. So I started focusing on very small things, like the railing of the fence. I started looking at the birds that were flying over me and the tree that they were living in. And I leaned over this little pond and I looked at these birds and they were just so beautiful. And I felt so grateful that I was there, that I was witnessing them and they were precious. Now, I turned what was not a good feeling into something better, something that I felt grateful for. I happen to love birds, but on the other hand, they're magical little creatures. Um, then as I was watching them, I felt um, something uh, fall down my back and I thought it was a spider. <laughs> okay, I don't know about that. I just like tied something around my neck and it did this. It took me out into the real world and I thought, I'm not gonna just live in my head. I'm gonna live in action and we are gonna take action. And that's, that's us, that's us, that's all of us. You have always made me smile <laughs> and laugh. I'm serious, it's like I wasn't prepared for the spider piece. That, <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. There's spider well, behind me. Because I don't like Yes, but that is but you know, you change <laughs> listen, Goldie, you changed your perspective. That's what helped me years ago yeah. in 2009. It yeah. helped me change my perspective yeah. about awesome. the entire work around education. Yeah. And I really, really hope um, that educators or anybody who's listening today, um, begins to challenge their own perspective and and see things differently and begin to realize they have the power to do that exactly we we definitely do so i guess we'll end on the fact that we have the power mm, we, we have the power i want to just give it just to everybody and, and know that, that that's really the truth thank you sweetheart this is amazing we have some questions and uh, maybe out oh, there thank you i appreciate the time you up for that Yes, we're going to take a couple of questions. Thank you so much, uh, Goldie and, and Dr. J, for such an inspiring conversation. And the, the first question really follows what Dr. J just said about the adults who want to start with themselves, but then go into the schools. So since we know, Goldie talked about the news and the kind of negativity around us, what can teachers do as, as schools is, is about to start? What are some things they can do to help the kids establish the foundation for a positive mindset because it's difficult to do right so you have the right intention how do you as school begins in a few weeks establish that foundation for a positive mindset with students what do you guys think well who wants to go do you want to go Jack? <laughs> okay well um i will just share i i would think i know t everyone's a little nervous you know because we've kind of been thrown into 
um, and charting new waters. But I want to um, first of all, I'll thank that person for asking the question because it may be someone else's question. But let's go back to building relationships. You know, um, the teacher-student relationship, there's nothing like that. Students, um, Goldie said it earlier, where students don't learn if they're not mindful. They're not, they're not going to learn if they're hungry. They're not going to learn if they don't feel cared for. And when you can go back and not just know their name, but get to know them, you're going to lower their anxiety and you're going to build a relationship that's going to cause and create an environment that will thrive and that will help them learn. That will be conducive for them to um, feel calm and feel well and feel included. And I believe we need to get back to that, building those authentic, organic relationships between the teacher and the student. And they can do this online. They can get them to find out who they are, share what they did, what do they like. You know, sometimes we've gotten into where we go straight into instruction exactly. and we miss, we miss those opportunities mm -hmm. to get to know our students. So I would like to suggest really going back to building relationships. What do you think, Goldie? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think relationships are very important and there is a way for you, for, there is a, a kindness, a, a loving kindness, a benevolence, a way of, of being really interested in your students. Um, they miss their teachers. And, 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 and I don't want to say that, oh, this is yeah. all about the lovable. It's about caring. And, and I think that's important. I also would let them know, and because we're looking at, again, how to implement Mind Up. Mind Up is a very positive experience. And I think that if you adapt, and this is not a sales pitch, by the way. You, you, know, you can go look at it and adapt it where you want. Um, although we are going to have online uh, training, uh, and it's going to be fantastic and easy to use. And also implementing it in these sort of uh, learning situations that we're dealing with today. Um, however, um, if there is an optimistic teacher or the way that, of expressing is that we're going to be doing some really interesting things this time. Mm. Uh, some of it isn't going to be just what we're doing here. Of course, we're going to learn our math and our spell. We're going to do all that. But there's other interesting things that we can do um, about how we can actually feel better and do better and, and, and so forth. So if, if we're going to have a, a good time this time. Um, so uh, I, I think giving them something to look forward to is different. It isn't just, we're just going to be doing the same old, same old. Um, there's going to be breaks. There, there's going to be something they're going to learn, which is, oh, when you're feeling low and you're feeling so forth, this is something that you, you can do. So we'll do a brain break. And we might do a few of them during this time because it's so fun. And then there's ways that you can integrate, like mindful movement. Um, when you do that, it's like, okay, so we're going to like, okay, put, we've done our math. Now we're going to get up and we've got 90 seconds and we're going to do it. And I want you to go and do mindful movement. I care. You jump and laugh and turn and twirl or yoga, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then we'll come back and start this again. Um, there has to be some kind of experience that these kids are, are having. So they're not just deadened by, you know, the, the influx of information and, so forth. That's why I'm looking at it as an experience. And we want to look at school as a varied holistic experience. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, that would be my, my, my advice. Long answer, but yeah. Long, but very fitting to uh, yeah. such an important question. And the second question is also, it's a parallel to this one. So the first was about students. The second one is about teachers, because the teachers are extremely overwhelmed right now, just in general. But now you add the fact that they are yeah. teaching online or might be teaching virtually. So how, I think this person is asking, how can we convince these teachers that incorporating all the amazing strategies you guys talked about in activities, like how do you convince them that doing this every single day is actually useful in class and in meetings when they're so overwhelmed? Well, first of all, they don't do it every day. Um, and that's number one. Um, and there are certain chosen things that they can do while they're experiencing, um, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, we dance every day and we do this every day. I would say that the program itself, at least our program, um, or anything that they can think of that actually would be a distraction. Um, we, we have to find ways to 
to experience some um, gratitude is one of them. I mean, and the kids can actually speak about what they're grateful for. It's, it, it isn't, a, it isn't all the things that they're learning. It's what, how we're feeling. Um, if we're feeling tired, if we're feeling, I mean, I think maybe we take three very amazing deep breaths today because breath is amazing and it actually activates your brain. So let's all take deep breaths today. I mean, this is not math. It's not English. It's not, it's just, caring a teacher who cares right. and, and and that's what i what i think we have to look at it not that it's a program it's a way of living mm. it's a way of being mm. and and i think that once we adopt this way of being then we can start integrating it into our class because mm. you're the leader the teacher is the leader and that means that the teacher has to have her brain breaks too. The teacher has to be focusing on what she's great or he's grateful too. The teacher has to be wondering, what are the things that make them happy? What are the areas, can they think of three things that make them happy? And is that something they're interested in in their class? What are the three things that make you happy? Mm. This or when you go to bed at night, how about guys do three things that you're grateful for or thankful for? Just that, just do that. You're going to feel so much better tomorrow. So in a way, you know, teachers go to school and then basically learn how to, how, to, how to teach kids all these different things, which is, which is, you know, we need it. They're not necessarily taught how to work the brain. They're not necessarily taught how to handle, uh, you know, emotional situations. And sometimes they just feel like they're overwhelmed because they don't, they're, they're not in a position to be able to handle kids who are out of control. So the more in control the teacher is, the more caring the teacher is, and the more caring you possess, you have in your back pocket for teachers, then you're gonna be what's, what's called contagion. We talked about it before, contagion. This virus has contagion. The anger that we are seeing in the polarity on television in the world and all of these things is contagion. We all feel it, and that's the difference. It isn't a virus but it, it could be a much longer lasting effect, which mm -hmm. is we don't want to be angry. We want to be around happier people. They found that people that are happy and they, you stay around them, you become happier by contagion. They've also found that people who are well, well, well overweight, if you actually hang, yeah, you will also gain weight. It's crazy, but it's what happens. We are like that. So I say you, a, a, Try to create the most positivity that you can in your heart, in your mind, and look at your day as something that's going to be okay. And your, t your children will know that because of your energy, because of what you're doing for yourself. So that, that's about it. I mean, we could go on, but that's kind of, I think, the way to go about it. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful way to wrap up. Uh, positive energy, surround yourself with happy. Um, you are what you seek. You are what you surround yourself with. So last word, Goldie. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I can't see you. I hope you enjoyed this time together. Um, and thank you so much, Dr. J. You are an angel on this earth. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Goldie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And this is one of our live events. We're going to have a lot more coming. And everything you took in today, we really hope you take it and start implementing right away. And we have a final slide that's going to give you an idea of where you can get more information about a few things that I saw some questions about. So for example, if you have just questions in general about MindUp um, and free resources for parents, for educators, for kids, we have lots of free resources on our website. You can see the link. And we also have upcoming webinars and, and live events that are going to be focused on breathing, on parents, on remote learning. So look out for those invitations. But for those who have specific questions about MindUp trainings, because we are doing virtual trainings now, if you wonder how you can bring MindUp to your school, just send an email to hello at mindup.org and we're gonna get in touch with you to find a way to help you because we know it's virtual, but the truth is, Nothing has changed in what your brain needs, right? Um, a happier brain can learn more. So I want to close with some gratitude. Um, we are extremely grateful you took the time to, to spend some time with us today. And from us to you, have an amazing evening. And thank you for tuning in.